Hebrews chapter number 9. Are we there now? Yes, sir. All right. Um, I'm looking for a comfortable place to start reading, but all of Hebrews is interested. Okay, let me start from the beginning. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. Right? Now you read, you read, you read on and on and on and on. And it began to talk about the priesthood. Right? It began to talk about the priesthood. How we now, our blood sacrifice not came. That um, we will not take an oxen, a calf. Or uh, an ephah, the arch of an ephah, they will not do the, the priest will not perform the, the sacrifice and will not take it to the temple, will not sprinkle on the materials on the temple and the priest will not declare that all the materials are now sanctified. Sanctification means holy. Let me ask you a question. What do the materials do? to become holy absolutely nothing just for the priest to come and throw death on them blood and ashes and declare that these materials are now holy sanctified they are now separated for the use of the temple right and you not say these materials are holy beautiful then he not goes on and on then it now says the Holy Ghost, this, the Holy Ghost, this signifies that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While the first tabernacle was yet standing. Okay, so now all the more that the Holy Ghost was saying that that physical tabernacle needs to get out of the way so that we can now begin to see the actual tabernacle that is not made with hand okay we now read on and read on and read on now we're not going to let's let's also go to um, 11 but christ being coming and high priest of good things to come by a greater by a greater and a perfect tabernacle not made with hand that is to say not of the of this beauty not made with hand that is to say not of this beauty neither by the blood of goats and cows but by his own blood he entered once into the holy place having obtained internal redemption wow he entered watch now he entered not with the blood of goats and calf but with his own blood into the what? Holy place. Now, let's, let's take a long dive. To 22. I want to show you something in 22. Are you 22 now? And almost all things are by the law poured with blood. Did you see the language? And almost, and almost all things are by the law poured with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission of sin. <sighs> that means there is no forgiveness anywhere, right? Without the shedding of blood. No forgiveness anywhere. Do you agree? Yes. Without the shedding of blood. But see, there's a trouble there. Almost means that there's still something remaining. 
right? Almost means that there is still something remaining. But yet, we were taught that the blood removes all sins. So there's a problem here. Now the problem is, which blood is he talking about? Are you getting this church? Which blood is Paul? I believe Paul wrote Hebrews. Which blood is Paul talking about here? Because we know that the blood of Jesus has redeemed us past, present, and future. But here, he's saying almost all things are caused. The key is upwards. So let's go upwards to 13, I think. So it says, for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an ephah sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. Hallelujah. So the blood is constrained to the flesh that means the blood cannot purify the spirit so therefore is not talking about the blood of jesus that is remissioning anything are we understanding Glory to God. So in 22, it's not the blood of Jesus that it was describing there. Because the blood of Jesus purifies the spirit and the flesh. But the blood is talking about here can only purify the flesh, not the spirit. That's why he said almost all things. The part that cannot be purified by the blood of goats and cows or the ashes of an ephah is your human spirit. So when the Bible talks about blood remissioning sin, it's not talking about the blood of Jesus. He's talking about the blood of the goats and the cows of the old days. So remission sin. Hallelujah. Ephesus. Praise God. So what he's saying, he's saying the, you are released from the fleshy, physical sin. But yet you are still hold bound by everything spirit. And of course we know that the blood of animals can only release the flesh for one year. After one year, the judgment comes again. That means there was no total, no total cleansing. He was not completely. That means he could not have been past, present, and future. If it's just for a season of one year. Now, 
The blood of Jesus did not come to forgive your sin. Hallelujah. It's getting a bit complicated now. But I promise you, by the time we're done with it, in our series of mini-series, you'll begin to understand. Jesus did not share his blood for God to use his blood to forgive your sin. Praise God. When did he share his blood? After creation, 400 and something years after the law was given to Moses. That's when, that's when he shared his blood. But yet, Ephesians 1 4 says, We were forgiven before the foundations of the world. Isaiah 54 verse 9 said, God told Israel, I'm not angry with you. I will never be angry with you. God is love. There is no offense that you can do to love that he will forgive you of. He has already forgiven you before the offense. So if God is love, before Christ came, he told Israel, I'm not angry with you. Where or what sin is he shedding the blood of Jesus now to forgive? Glory to God. Who is still here? Who is not missing? Who is still here? Who is not missing? John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. Cleanse us from, not off, from sins. The blood of Jesus did not come to clean us off sin, but from sin. The blood of Jesus releases us. Hallelujah. Jesus did not share his blood for God to forgive him. God has already forgiven you before he created the world. Jesus' blood came to reveal the love of God's forgiveness to you. Not to call, create forgiveness for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Let me say it again. Jesus' blood was shed to reveal the love of God for you. To reveal that you have been forgiven. To reveal that you've been redeemed. Hallelujah. Praise to Lord. reveal what you already are and have. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression that were under the first testament. Did you see that? They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. The blood of Jesus did not come to give you inheritance. 
He came to reveal the inheritance that you have. Hallelujah. Jesus did not come to share blood to give you inheritance. His blood was shed so that you to reveal that you already you are already an that you are already a legal citizen of heaven. He didn't share his blood so that I will, I will inherit the kingdom of God or heaven. He shed his blood so that I will know I am already in heaven. Yes. Redemption of the transgression. Do you know what redemption really means? Apomotosis. It means to be separated from the shackles of slavery. Hallelujah. Apo, lutosis. Apo means separate, remove, completely, taken out. Lutosis, breaking of bounds that fasten one to a particular place. Do you know somebody can be forgiven, right? But not released. You can be forgiven, but yet not released. The blood of Jesus did not come to forgive you. The blood of Jesus came to release you from where you were, yet not forgiven, but released you so that you can be free. Another word for redemption is ransom. Ransomed. Anybody that is ransomed from the shackles of kidnapping or bondage or slavery, it means that the person has been set free. The person can go to wherever, when or how the person feels or wants to. That means there is no restriction putting you in a cage or a chain towers around you. You know the actual Greek word uh, apolutosis, it means that the fasting chains on your leg has been broken so you can walk freely to anywhere you want to go to. So the blood of Jesus came to reveal to us that we are no longer chained, captured, put in a place that he has paid for us to get out of where we are, chained, defeat, sick, broke, Busted, pushed around like a bump of log behind the head's kitchen. We're no longer that person. We are no longer in Grumbo Alley. We are not eating the bottom pots in Poverty Lane. We are out there in Victory Street. We are out there in Victory Street. We have all we need. We've been redeemed. Glory to God. I've been released. I don't know. You. If you've been released, stand on your feet and begin to declare. I have redemption. I have redemption. I've been released. I've been separated from the bond the bounds of this world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, thank you for your word. In the name of Jesus. 